Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've gotten a haircut. What? Enhanced, ain't I? Ah! Ah! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Ooh, I love getting a haircut. It makes my head look all aerodynamic. Feels nice. Now, given the fact that today we are going to be doing a little hearthstoning, today I, I really wanted to just keep playing top meta decks. So I wanted to keep doing our good old token druid. This deck has just been kicking ass. It's fun to kick ass with. I wish to continue to kick ass with it. Um, and so I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let me just make sure that all this stuff is correctly set up on my extension. Cool, yeah. Just enabled the overlay tracker for the innkeeper. So, for any of you who don't know the gist of this deck, the gist of this deck, really straightforward, okay? Really straightforward. We're gonna try to flood the board with a whole bunch of small dudes and make them stick for one turn. All we gotta do is get them to stick for one turn. An example that I think is the like classic play in this deck, you Whispering Woods to summon a bunch of 1-1 one -one Wisps, you soul of the forest to give them death rattle summon tree ants. So you know what? It's really hard to ever double clear if this happens. So let's say that he single clears, he clears all our whispering woods and we get to keep the soul of the forest. We can throw down a savage roar to give each of them plus two attack. We can throw down two savage roars to give everything plus four attack. We can do one of these and one branching paths to also give my minions plus one attack. And that's it, That's and then we just win. So everything else in the deck is here to support this idea of either summoning tokens and making them more sticky, um, or letting us stay alive until we can get there. That's it, that's it. Um, you know, we have plays such as play Ultimate Infestation, and then play an Arcane Tyrant for zero, right? Get two things on the board, maybe get them to stick. We have things like Spreading Plague to summon a whole bunch of tokens. Hopefully they can stick around for a turn and I can just win with that. Malfury and the Pestilence, summon two tokens. Violet Teacher, cast these a couple of times. Cast spells a couple of times and get these two summon out a bunch of 1-1s. One That's it. It's really it. Um, for any of you curious about the slate of when we're going to be doing Bloodborne, Bloodborne's Monday next week. Tomorrow is going to be the usual Dota-ing. Thursday is going to be mostly walking, and Friday is going to be Magic the Gathering. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I was going to finish Bloodborne yesterday, or at least get a lot of the way through it yesterday, but I was just tired. I did six pretty long days of streaming in a row last week. Okay, uh, who could we possibly be up against? Because I did Monday Bloodborne, Tuesday Hearthstone, Wednesday Dota, Thursday Magic the Gathering, morning the stream, um, uh, and then mostly walking evening stream, then Friday, Spectrum Retreat, and then Saturday, Day Night Festival, which was amazing. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm tired, so I just stopped and just didn't do a show yesterday. Ooh. Lysman says, I've been kind of pissed as Bloodborne streams just because he's having such an easier time than I did at certain parts. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, I had a conversation with my brother yesterday. So I'm talking to Nick. Um... Morning my time, evening his time in Korea. And I say, I've been playing Bloodborne. He's like, dude, I love that game. I beat that. I beat Dark Souls 3. Dude, The Old Hunters is, like, the hardest thing that I've, like, ever done. And I said, yeah, no, I've been hearing it's pretty difficult. I'm, I'm basically planning on trying to, you know, stream for, like, six hours and just beat it, um, you know, dedicate six hours to beating it. Because, again, in my head, the DLC for Dark Souls Remastered for Dark Souls 1, took me like three hours. Three and a half. Wasn't terribly long. So I say to Nick, yeah, no, I'll probably just try to beat it in a day of streaming. And Nick literally goes, bah! Bah! I'm gonna beat it in a few hours. Bah! Oh, Sean. Oh my god, Sean. Oh, hold on. Let me catch my breath. Oh! <laughs> doing this to me on the phone. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, it doesn't seem, you know, like, uh, I mean, that, that seems to be on pace, like, you know, spend a day beating a zone. And he's like, spend a day! Oh, he's gonna spend one day! Sean, listen, 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 listen. You're gonna wanna burst into tears. You're gonna spend 12 hours. There's gonna be one boss who's got, like, he's 
a little bit, a horse, he's like a human, you don't know what the fuck he is, but you're gonna wanna cry after you're playing against him, cause it is the worst experience that will ever happen in your life, and now I wanna beat it in four hours. Because if I do that, then every time I'm like pouring a bowl of cereal, I'm gonna be like, Nick, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, what even is my play right now? This is a, this is a shit draw. I think I actually draw for cards? But then I'd have to use the coin. God, this, this sucks. I gotta pop this. I don't really want a Whispering Woods, because, I mean, it's it's a high-value card, and he's just going to swipe it. It's just no, There's no real reason for me to Whispering Woods in this matchup, with swipe being such a... common key. We're probably dead. If it's a mirror matchup, token versus token, it's really whoever gets the ramp off first that I find tends to be the winner. It does hurt me a little bit that I couldn't swipe that, but it should be fine. my logic here. I think I do want to cast this because it will fill up my board. I only need to get it to stick once and he could spreading plague but then I can just respond by casting spreading plague which I'm sort of okay with. He swipes, that's okay. Because in this matchup, um, Whispering Woods tends not to be the way that you win it anyways. Okay, so this is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill just this one. And I'm going to Spreading Plague. I did that wrong. It's fine. Sometimes we just do things wrong, you know? Alright, so let's get some cards out of our hand. Now what he could do is he could just double burst us. He could just double Savage Roar or Savage Roar Branching Path, something to clear this out. But then he's got a whole bunch of like two health dingers. And I think I think that's actually okay. I think I'm actually okay with that. Let's see. Oh, he draws a card. Oh, he's so bad for him. We have a lot of good options. We have a lot of good options. We have a lot of good options. Although I did, I am sad that I don't have a seventh one of these. Hilariously enough, this can be quite good when we have the spreading plague up. Because, um... He, he can't now summon any more creatures. He can't really get a board more threatening than this. And we have a giant army of taunts. This is actually okay. He's used a branching path. He only has two Savage Roars left. Now, if I use this right now, uh, we do run the risk of... Let's see if I, go, I can go pop, pop. I can blow up a few of them. I think it actually is a good time to hit him with this. It's going to be a little painful if we wind up uh, burning a card, but there were two cards that we could have drawn, so... 
Yep, we drew one of them. And that's okay. Oh, actually, no, wait, I was totally wrong. There's only one card we could have drawn because Arcane Tyrant. We can't play it because we have a full board. See, now, this is this is a relatively obnoxious board for him to be up against. Because, no, he can Savage Roar in order to start clearing stuff. He can totally do that. But now he's, like, down to just two Bursty cards. And we have some pretty vicious ways to refill. Again, he's used two, two of his finishing cards. Two of his four finishing cards. Oh, thank you for reminding me about the deck tracker. Uh, I just need to hit the button. Thank you very, very much, Loader09. The innkeeper overlay should be working in Hearthstone, right? Should be working in Hearthstone. Time goes short. You see, this is fantastic. I am ready to look. Look at this, look at this glorious inefficiency that we see before us. So now we have a lot of options here. Four, five, six, seventy-nine. Well, that's not the best. Let's we have a, we have a number of very good options right now. Cool, there's one of our finishers. Um, I think that probably the most important one is just to run this guy out. Pretty basic. Just summon the Tontos pronto. I'm going to pop his Violet Teacher. Now, again, he's used the Soul of the Forest. That's one of his key sticky things. He's used... a, um... Savage War. He's used a Branching Paths. And these are pretty critical in this matchup in order to stay alive. Let's see... I'm not saying we auto win, but it is a positive. There are there are positives in the situation, especially if he starts hitting with these two ones, sending himself to one health. Great, great, good, nice. Okay. I mean, I think that, that the play is pretty obvious. Well, well, maybe it's less obvious than I think. You know, I think I, I actually don't play the Violet Teacher on this turn, because then he can Spreading Plague and really kind of hurt me hard. So I think we just do this kind of more basic... How many cards do we have left? We have ten cards. Yeah, I think, I think this is actually okay. We hit like this. Thank you. Thank you, Honda. See, he has eight cards, so we can't really cast an ultimate infestation. Hmm. messed up. So we don't have a Spreading Plague. The good news is that I'm the luckiest man in the world, and we're just going to rip the Spreading Plague right now. Well, yeah. Alright, well, this is good. We actually do need the, the Tontos. Yeah, I think I, I think I screwed up. So we can kill one, two, three of them, and then he just has four, but then we run the risk of death. I try to draw for it. Actually, this is what I have to do. Oops. He knows I ran out two swipes. Yeah, no, I think we actually just lost here. Whoopsie dipsy daisies. Pay attention, class. Yeah, look at that. Wow. He's just going to Savage Roar and kill us. 3, 6, 9, 12. Whoopsie doopsie.
If he doesn't have one of those cards to kill us, then I'll be surprising. A tangled web. Oh yeah, yeah, no, we're dead. You win. I can rest now. I can rest now. You know, maybe it might have been okay to hold the station. I, I mess this matchup up with some frequency where I really think that it's all kind of about this weird interaction of filling your board with wisps versus filling your board with spreading plague. Because if I fill with wisps and, and soul the forest, and then he fills with um, spreading plague, I'm kind of boned because I can't play a taunt. I can't play anything that helps my board. I must so I have to kill those, otherwise he'll just kill me with the Savage Roar and the Branching Pads. It's arguable that we could also work a Lich King in here, but I don't think it's that necessary. And I really needed to account for the fact that I'd used both swipes and didn't have Spreading Plague. Because if he does that Wisp turn and I do have Spreading Plague, he essentially loses. He essentially loses right then and there. But again, his board is full of non-taunters. He's going to need. To, he's already spent two of his win conditions. He would need to spend another one of his win conditions. Or actually, two of his win conditions in order to clear it. And then he just doesn't have any burst, and then we win that way. So I sort of set myself up for success, and then just dropped the ball at the last second. Okay. So it's not an even guy. But I'm just going to oak and summons, because I don't really need to go file of teachers. It's just nice to have a threat out. Twice Big Tater says, was watching older videos of you, and man, you are looking so fresh now. Power hot. Yeah! Trying to buy clothes I like, get haircuts more frequently. Oh. Our friend. He has messed up, has he not? Do I actually want to pop this guy? I might. It's arguable that I should just pop this guy now. No, 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 no. I say no because there's been a lot of incidents of that 4 4 that heals for 4. Yeah, I've been like putting more moisturizer on my face, and as you see, like my skin's a lot more clear and a lot more even. A lot more even, Steven. Okay, so do I just run out this and ping that? I think so. This would actually be fine to double armor to make this deal six damage and to kill that. This is weird because this is not an even lock, and thus far he kind of looks like it. This appears to be some sort of. This, this could just literally be a cube lock. Weirdly enough, that's actually better for us. That he's cubing those. I do want to gain the armor. 100,000 million billion percent. I shall do as you say. I want to keep the extra damage. Do as you say. Cube Lock is actually a horrific matchup for this Token Druid. One of the big reasons why Token Druid wound up being a top meta deck yes. oh, yes. is because of the fact that there's just not a lot of this deck out here. If he gets the 3-9 Taunter, it's kind of a relief, actually. Well, that's great. Now, I think I actually just want to blow this guy up. I could draw an innervate, that'd be tight. But 
It's all good. I shall do you say. This, this can help us some. Many cards are profoundly helpful to us at this juncture in our lives. That is maybe the most helpful one. So I hit like this. Spreading plug and swipe seems good. I do this even though it leaves up the possibility of this getting cubed. I think this is just correct. Not positive though. We have a lot of damage. We have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. It's an okay amount of damage. <clears throat> Alright, well we've probably lost this game. <laughs> I truly have no idea what to do about this. Truly, truly, I do 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 not know what to do about that. I just gotta blow this up, right? This is just absolutely what must happen. I'm, I'm feeling pretty dead here. Like, I don't want to summon the poison spiders, even though it seems obvious that I would do this, because they just get easily, easily, easily cleaned up by um, one hellfire. I'd rather just have more targets out to be able to solo the forest. Something like this. Dr. Jerem says, any plans for one-upping Kibler and P or Whalen for your reveal stream? Perhaps something cutting edge like balanced audio levels? Damn, dude, Patrick Jerem, you are <laughs> savage. What happened? What happened on the preview stream? Tremble before Taldemar. Oh, that sucks. Quiet voices, loud game sounds. Oh, we are just boned, man. This, this is, this is real pain that we're going to be experiencing here, man. I absolutely do this first. All right. So I think that very clear this is what we do. Very clear that this is light and rot. Probably actually pick off this first. Dealing with a bunch of these Void Lords is going to be a profound pain. It's arguable that we might be able to outlast him via just grinding his health down instead of just trying to do some sort of burst. I'm not, not entirely sure. That's like really weird that the reveal stream was executed poorly on the Blizzard side. That's really surprising. Alright. Goodbye, my board. Goodbye, his board. Nice, actually. Actually, pretty nice. Could be, could be good for us? Okay, so I think the play is clear, right? We whack like this whoop, to draw one, which we did not really need, but it's something that we can do. We can then pop these two fellows and then hit him with some 
Oh, this. Hit him with some of this. And I'm, I'm relatively pleased because we still have a Savage Roar and a Branching Paths and another Savage Roar. That's the one we want. Okay, as long as he doesn't summon King Demon Lord Mega Blood Reaver Ghoul Dangerous. And if he... Woo! If he does use a Defile here, then we have the benefit of still having an additional Defile left. Or, uh, of, of having no more Defiles left for him, and we still have a Spring Blitz left. Okay. How wish we to do this? So I can go three six. Tangled web. So I can hit him three times, hit again three times. This is this is rough, tough, and bad. My Burn one card. Plagued. My thoughts are plagued. How can we blast through this the most efficiently? I think I actually am going to have to branching paths. Death is actually, if I branching paths seven fuck. My thoughts are plagued. Shit. Alright, I missed math. Fuck! I'm trying to hit this guy. I'm trying to hit this one right here. Okay, we messed up. <laughs> I think I had to. I think I had to do at least one Savage Roar. This matchup is heinous, by the way. Blood Reaver Gul'dan just blows us out, like, immediately. A lot of things blow us out immediately, actually. Hellfire. For one. That sure doesn't help us, does it? Mm. So if I shoot him in the face, then he has a way to pop this and then clear. Which is bad. I can also hit him for six now. Draw the ultimate infestation on top of this. So if I do this now, that doesn't help. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm just literally going to try to go for face damage by ripping a Savage Roar right now. Fail boat. Light and rot. Death is eternal. My turn God, this sucks not. so much. Don't have Blood Reaver Gul'dan one time! One time, man. One time. Dude, this guy. There, there's like a 0% chance he doesn't have heal. He doesn't have like an Amethyst Spellstone. He used his Dark Packs, I think. There it is. Balls. Crappity, crappity butts. Play another small man. Blow the man down. He hasn't played Gold Dangerous yet, which is so good and so sweet for us. He's playing small critters. Alright, no Blood Reaver Gul'dan off the top one time? 
If he if he peels a Gold Dangerous, we die, man. But now, now I can guarantee draw Savage Roar and Power of the Wild this turn. <laughs> See, now I've created two threats. There's a lot of things he needs to not have. This matchup is just so bad for us. One threes, maybe? One threes, one time? Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Alright. I must feed now. Did we maybe do this? Shit. I think we didn't quite. Out of cards. Shit. I don't think we actually did it. Because if I had Power of the Wild and Savage Roar, then... Oh my god, we were so close. Like, if this guy didn't exist. If it was just a bunch of 1-3s. <laughs> Fuck. Come on, man. Well... Alright, we almost won in the worst matchup. Best I can do. This is the best I can do. Dude, yesterday was fun. I had a fun day off. I spent the whole day trying to learn more about the UI um, system in Unity. Because I have a lot of experience with Alfieri the physics engine. Which I think is super cool, super interesting. I've done lots of very physics-y based prototypes in Unity in my life. We're against a shaman, we want this, we want this, we don't want that. Um, yeah, the... Oh gosh, it's so fun. Uh, but I didn't have a lot of experience with the um, UI system, so I was like, okay, let me just figure out how this stuff works. And, you know, when, when I'm trying to learn the UI right now, um, one of the things that is, is sort of programmed into me, imbued into me as a person, uh, is this idea of if you are doing any programming, do things flexibly, right? You want to be able to... Um, you know, if you're, if you're programming Hearthstone, you want to make a system that makes it easy to create new cards. You don't just want to write the code for this card and write the code for this card and write the code for this card. Because then, each new card requires a constant fixed amount of work to just do it all. How the hell do I play this out? Violet Teacher, perhaps? I think this is right. You want to create a system for it. it's really flexible, and um, you know. So I was thinking the same thing about the UI, right? I was just trying to make a main menu, right? It's real basic shit. I see. And Unity has all these really cool things that are like layout groups that let you automatically construct things in a grid and automatically construct things like in columns and whatnot. All right, great. I got a soul read. Beautiful systems that's there. But the funny thing... Oh, actually, let me let me be really specific on something. The interesting thing about the way that UIs work in um, various games is resolutions and how you want them to display in terms of resolutions is super, 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 super important. Thinking through that, understanding that, super duper important. For instance, let me just take Hearthstone, and if I take Hearthstone and I shrink it like this... Uh, well, first of all, let me remove this duplicate uh, display, right? You can see, oh, right, it's it's cutting off the sides. But it's keeping the main game board fixed, right? It's not squishing this. It's not squishing the game board. It's eliminating certain edges. Now, on some games, it actually does cut off 
certain things. It does squish. It does re resize. That sort of thing. Uh, now, okay, what, what? how do I wish to hurt this man? I think I, I just do the relatively simple hit this and draw two cards. Because we're 99% uh, up against a... Um, do I even want to do this? I don't think so. 99% we're up against a Shutter Walk Shaman. But anyways, sometimes you want your UI to squish. Sometimes you want your UI to be fixed on pixels. Sometimes you want your UI to be a size relative to the screen. So a really great example would be, um, oh, you know, like this, this little overlay control. Let's imagine this overlay was part of the game. You can imagine if this were on a Hearthstone mobile device, you wouldn't want this to just shrink down because then you would have unbelievably difficult time just reading any of this shit. Something, something, and rot. The circle of life is over. Now, do I want to pop this? I think so. Typically, I want to be going for the face as much as humanly possible, but this combination uh, coming up on eight man is really nice. I would expect them to, like, pop and maybe clear, and then I can bang out these two and win handily. So, anyways... There's all these different requirements and needs and things that I would want to have were I making a UI. Ooh, we have double Whispering Woods. So I think that the uh, intelligent thing to do would be to clear like this. Play like this to probably refill. No, I probably want to do one, two, three. And then play the Whispering Woods. And then run out the Soul of the Forest. And this is just a real heinous threat for him. And, you know, it's interesting because there's a whole lot of things related to UI that I just did not really think that much about. Like, do you want this to be fixed pixel size? Or do you want this to stretch and squish based upon what the screen's doing? And how do you want it to stretch and squish? And uh, this fantastic human by the name of W. Corwin and Jodex on the... Uh, I was chatting with them on the Discord about this. And one thing that Corwin, uh, W. Corwin pointed out is that yeah, Sean, you might have come from a programming background where you always want to make things flexible and extensible and adjustable and kind of work in different circumstances, but a lot of UIs really do demand that you give the answer, here is the specific pixel dimensions that I want that I'm working with. You really want specificity there, which on one hand is good, because it kind of liberates me from trying to think about things so extensively. But on the other hand, it hurts me because, come on, it's my programming, right? You've got, you've got to make it good. Here's Lightning Storm, by the way. And now he has no mana, so then we can Whisper in the Woods, Power of the Wild, and hit him in the face, and we're in good shape. Never mind. I'm too lucky. Oh, we had two good plays, and we're going to choose the goodest play. So... Um, but it's funny because I talked to W. Corwin Jodex at the end of all my playing around with the UI system, right? So I want you to imagine I'm someone who's trying to make just a really simple menu that just displays some really simple information. Can't quite get it to display properly. Can't quite get it to display properly, right? And I'll tell you the bug that I hit. I'll tell you because it's so funny. It's not a bug. It's technically working as intended. I'm going to wild growth just to make sure that I have the uh, largest opportunity to peel a Savage Roar and just win the game immediately. That's the same thing. Light and rot. So here, here's the UI bug that I encountered. This is so funny. Because if you understand how all the tools and systems that Unity's UI uh, thing has, you can make sense of what was going wrong, but when you're trying to learn how these different, like, uh, little widgets interact with each other, when you're trying to learn, it was totally baffling to me. So, there's something called a layout group, where, let's just suppose for a moment, imagine, um, well, here's a really great example. Imagine this menu, right? You have a button for concede, 
you have a little bar for space. You have a button for options. You have a button for quit, right? So we have button, graphic, button, button. We have those four things. What a layout group does is a layout group automatically sets these up vertically and makes them all the same size, right? It automatically just stacks them vertically. Isn't that nice? That way I don't have to pixel by pixel adjust it. And then down the line, if I wanted to stretch this window, make it a little bit bigger, the vertical layout group would just kind of fill in the spacing. Oh my God, so fantastic, right? We're against a hunter. I think I actually do want the branching pads against a hunter. No, no, I don't. All right, so here, this is what a vertical layout group does. Now, the way to think about it is a vertical layout group is the parent and it's in charge of how the children get sized, right? I, the parent, I'm the layout group. You're the elements in the layout group. I'm in charge of how you get placed. There is another little widget called the content size fitter. It does a very intuitive thing. It will take this window, see this bordering thing? And, all, and it has these four elements. It will shrink to make sure that it can fit everything that's here. It will fit the size of the content. And this would make sense, for instance, if let's say I'm in an RPG and I have um, a buff that's listed there, and I want my little buff in a UI element to show up. And then if I get two more buffs, I want to go dish, dish, dish. and I want I want it to expand and contract. Right? That's what the content size fitter would be really valuable for. My content size fitter, very fortunately, will let me adjust and shrink, right? So, I want you to think about these things. Vertical layout group, I'm in charge of my children. I'm in charge of their size and placement to make sure that they get placed vertically. Plus, I am a content fitter. I'm going to shrink to just fit the size of my content. Pay attention, class. So, what was happening is when you put both of those on together, the content size fitter is like, shrink this down as much as possible. And the vertical layout group is like, hell yeah, I'm in charge of my kids. And those together shrink everything down to a pixel size of zero. <laughs> see, see what I mean? If one is trying to shrink the size of the window and the other is in charge of the kid's size, those together shrink everything down to zero. Now I want you to imagine your local day nine trying to debug this what is going on? By the way, I think this is far and away the best because it minimizes the amount of um, swing back that he can have from Unleash the Hounds and maximizes the threat of the next turn where I can, like, you know, nourish, play something, or branching pads and get two dudes, or even Whispering Woods, something like this. Anyways. Now, again, the way that I debug things is I, I think, here is my intended outcome. Day nine, he's an amazing guy. Oh, day nine. Whoa. Oh, this is gonna hurt him. Oh, this is cruel right here. Oh my god, this is vicious. Five creatures, you can unleash the hounds and kill one dude, and then I can kill you next turn? Mm. Ugh. Thanks, stay hydrated, bot. I should get more water after this. So normally the way that you debug is, you, is in your head you have an expected result and a different result happens. And you try to think, where, where's the difference happening here? What's what's going on? Huh? But every single time my fucking UI would disappear. It would disappear and be gone. It's gone. <laughs> I'd be like, ah, ah. I want to draw the cards here. Because we already have plenty of steam. I So I could not figure out what the fuck is going on. Oh my god. So so it's just this just like god <laughs> banging my head against the wall. So finally I understand how this works. And um there's a number of things that frankly I think are just little almost typo based thing. For instance, there's a checkbox. You know how I was talking about, here is my parent panel. This is my parent, which is the gray thing. And 
Concede is a child of this. Options is a child of this. Quit is a child of this, right? We have the brown parent controlling these button children. Um, can I kill him? Can I kill him right now? Do we have the steam to do this? We have uh, 5, 10, 5, 10, 5, 10, and 7 is 17. And yeah, good job. Day 9! Oh, wait. This is 5. This is 10. This is another seven, and this is two, so yes. I am ready to learn. I am ready to learn. I shall do as you I say. Shall do as you say. Oh, right, so you heard me talking about those, um, these little, child, why the fuck was I even talking about this? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you know what I was saying about the vertical layout group controls a lot of the size of the children? There is an option that says controls child size. Or excuse me, it says child control size. So when I read that, I read, oh, this means that my children will be in charge of their own size. It means the opposite of that. If you say con child controls size, it means the child doesn't have control over its size. I do. Totally backwards label check mark. That was fucking hard to figure out. Because again, every time I misunderstand um, what's here and I try to check something, a lot of time my whole UI is disappearing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Fear not, uh, 217, um, uh, says, would think that'd be control child size. You'd think that. You'd think that. Let me actually see if I can, uh... Yeah, like, let me, let me actually see if I can open this up. This is, this is, this is funny. Um, what's the name of it? Vertical layout. Group unity. Yeah, let me, like, this is... Yeah, let me let me actually show this. Okay, so let me. Da -da 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 -da. Boom and okay, so right here. Look at this. Here's here's the documentation for the UI. You see, child control size. See how it's written, child control size. If this is checked, I feel like this means that my child is in charge of its size. And look down here, child control size. Whether the layout group controls the width and height of its children. <laughs> it's like again the opposite. All right, what's going on over in Hearthstone? I wish to hurt your face. Probably gonna lose because he's rampant foist. So the way we lost last time, I think that spreading plague is our key nut draw in this match. I think it's all about spreading plague. This is a Malagos room, so this means that everything is different. It means that every everything is different. Okay, so we're going to nourish for mana, play the Arcane Tyrant, and then we're going to try to Whispering Woods and Power the Wild to float aboard with a lot of stuff. So the way this deck works, by the way, is that this twig of the world tree gained 10 mana crystals. You can play a Malagos. All right, that's actually really, 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 really good. You play the Malagos, whack with the twig of the world tree to refill your mana, and then you can like faceless manipulator, faceless manipulator. So now you have three Malagoses. You have plus 15 spell fire. Shoot you in the face. Shoot you in the face. Game's done. Oh, this is so funny. I love this. Melter Foss says, I enjoy debugging, but I often forget to check the simple things. The other day, I spent an hour trying to figure out why my code wasn't doing anything. Only to realize the name of the file I was modifying was one letter different than the name of the one I was supposed to be modifying. Oh, dude. Stuff like that is just ceaselessly fascinating to me. Whispering Woods is going to summon six. Go ahead and do this now. 
Because I can I can actually power the wild and double branching paths and or double boost from branching paths, and that's fine. That's actually totally fine. Yeah, dude, did you guys see this? Okay, so what's the name of it? It's like Aliens, Colonel, Marines, or is it Anal? A oh, a Anal. It's not Anal. That's not the name of it. It is an Anal Colonial Marines. It's, there's the game Aliens, Colonial Marines, that had really shit AI. It was awful AI. And someone figured out quite a while later. This is four. I need two more armor to upgrade. For the wild. So the AI was just awful for this, and someone figured out, like, five years later, that they had misspelled something like yield, like why. I E L D as Y E I L D. And if you literally just flipped those letters, oh no, it was tether. That's right, it was the word tether. T E T H E R was accidentally spelled T E A T H E R. And that right there fixed the AI. Instantly it was more interesting, responsive, interactive. And it's just one of those, like, no. Like, one of those, like, holy shit, you're kidding me. One of moments where you're just like, you guys, oh no. I think this is the correct decision. Just do this again, because I gotta hurry up and just win this game. Swiping. Oh, that de it's deck run Starfall. Okay. That I learned. Poison Quail says no one even bothered to try to debug the obviously broken ad before release. Clearly, the should know it wasn't behaving as it should. Yeah. Alright, we lost. I'm, I'm just gonna hit him with the well played. This match was hard as hard AF. I think I needed to be slightly more conservative with Soul of the Forest, but I just. I was just like, the only way you can clear me is a double swipe, and then you play Starfall, and I'm like, oh my god, my plan was, in retrospect, was terrible. <sighs> Debugging games is really interesting. So now I think the, the only, th one of the only components that I've never used in Unity at this point is the animator. And I'm really interested in this thing called inverse kinematic animation. And I saw this just amazing guide to it. So here's here's the idea of inverse kinematics. Okay, so the way that an animation typically works is you have like a joint here, and then you have a, a connection to another joint here, and then you have a connection to another joint here. And let's say that my hand is just like a fixed thing, right? It doesn't, there's no fingers or anything like that. So if I move just the elbow joint around like this, that, that's great. Or if I move just the shoulder joint, or if I move just the wrist joint, you know, I'm talking about. You get what I'm saying. So um, the way that you, you would typically do an animation is, if, let's say I'm trying to reach for this glass. Um, you would have the animator do like, here is a frame, and then our keyframe, and then the animator would uh, adjust over to here. And here's another frame, or keyframe, you adjust here, and adjust here. And each of these adjustments would involve, like, individually moving the shoulder out, moving the elbow, moving the wrist. And you'd get these combinations of motions would then get interpolated from this keyframe to this keyframe to this keyframe. And by interpolated, I mean that it would compute that, oh, if the wrist was here and is here, then this is the motion. This motion, right? Or if the, the, the elbow joint was now here and was here, then the interpolation is going to look like this. It's going to just bend along the joint. And the important thing about this is that the animator is defining, I start here, 
and then I go here, and then I go here, and then I go here, and then I go here. And that's a huge skill as an animator to know where which thing reaches first. Like for instance, if I have my arm like this, if I'm reaching for this cup, I might straighten my, my wrist immediately and then lead like that, right? It's not just continuously uniform. I don't just slowly bend my wrist. Sometimes, again, being a human, I'll bend something quickly, or maybe I'll lean in first and not move my arm at all. I'll lean in and then reach. There's tons and tons of these. I think I actually double. Let me think here. Do I double gain armor in order to blow this guy up quickly? I think I draw one, and then I see what I receive. Great. I want to do this, so that way when I Malfurion, there's armor up again. So, as an animator, you have to have this not just... It's not just literally the, the output of moving the arms and the joints to the given positions. It's about me as someone who's studied motion, understanding things like, oh, when a human reaches for a glass, they move their body first and their arm second. So I'm probably gonna animate it like that. Now, inverse kinematic animation is almost, you know, as, as a someone who programs, programmer's dream. The idea is that it's not me defining these motions first to make it look like I'm grabbing the object. Instead, I actually give an end position and then I program various weights to like how much I want to bend these sorts of things. So if I'm like shooting a fireball or holding a, a shield like this, I can go from shield to fireball motion using the understanding of where the last part of the skeleton has to be. I'm not explaining that well because I'm getting distracted by this. Shoot. By all of this shoot. Shit. So I think I want to hit this, swipe that. Yeah, this is good. Very good. So, so I explained that poorly. So normal animation is like, I start at the shoulder, move to the elbow, and then go to the wrist, right? Like, and set all these positions. Well, inverse kinematic is about, I know that my hand, the last piece, the last part of the limb wants to be here. I will now inversely figure out the angles on the elbow and the angles on the shoulder, right? You look at where your your hand's gonna, the end of your hand's going to be, and you compute everything in reverse. And so, I think I actually just draw here. This is not a particularly frightening threat. Seems like an acceptable, just thinning of the deck. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit it. To compel the trade. Um, and so this is this is kind of like a dream. Like if any of you have seen an Uncharted where um, Nathan Drake will sometimes... Is his name Nathan Drake? Is Nathan... No, Nathan Drake, that's the... Isn't that the character from Eureka? What's the name of the character in that fucking game? It is Nathan Drake? Isn't Nathan Drake also the name of the character in Eureka? What the hell is the name of that dude? Nathan Stark is Eureka. God, thank you, thank you. Thank you. He's slowing down, I'm slowing down. It's all good. I'll eventually flood out Spreading Plague and Solar Force. Cool. Anyways, sometimes you'll see, like, there's, you know, maybe a wall here. And what Nathan Drake will do is if he's standing next to the wall, you'll just see his hand set up right here. And it looks really natural, because that's, like, what people do. And this would be really hard to actually specifically program in all these animations. So sometimes you can... Ah, this sucks! What if I did the four of these? No, I actually gotta do this, like, right now. Alright, I mean, I, I kind of... I'm, I'm, like, almost about to kill him, but... God, this is, like, not quite having the cards that I need. 
This deck, the hardest part, is the spike of power that occurs right when the Mountain Giant and the Twilight Drake drop. We've already dealt with that. He'll have infrequent spikes like this. Um, but if I can get an ultimate infestation or a nourish, not like my finishing cards here, he's going to be able to clear one, but, oh, God. Anyways. Yeah, like, it would be really annoying to have to constantly have every single little situation accounted for. Like, if it's this far, or this far, or this far, or this far from the wall. Well, with inverse kinematics, you just say, whenever you are this far away from the wall, draw a line out from the chest, and wherever it hits, that's going to be the end position of the hand. And then inverse kinematics just kind of figures out the rest. Super cool stuff. I also believe that I am more than likely dead. Four, eight is 12, two is... All right, so I, I, I simply must do this. I must armor up. And so I was looking at this really cool tutorial where someone was just essentially saying, let's remake Dark Souls. Let's literally just make Dark Souls. He's a programmer who's just very much so not an artist. Like, I can't stress this enough. This is the most non-artistic man that has ever lived. Doing this very elegant, beautiful um, death coil back to back. Wow. And these really beautiful animations just using inverse kinematics. And so, uh, Patrick Jaram says, weird, I don't remember making that tutorial. Uh, Patrick Jaram, I now know that you are the second oyster artist in the entire universe. And so I've always been really curious about, like, just how the hell does the animator work in Unity? That's really cool. Um, really want to learn that. Malfurion versus Anduin. The light shall bring victory. Breedwiser says, Danine, can you I tell us about Artifact? I can pretty much only state what I know from... This matchup sucks. Not a lot, but it sucks some. It's very easy to abruptly win. It's very easy to abruptly lose. It's a very, it's a very abrupt matchup. You know what? I'm going to give a reaction to something regarding Artifact. It's very publicly known. People have written about this. But you have like 15 seconds on your turn, or some very short amount of time, in order to make a decision. Right? Because the way the turns work is it's, I take an action, then you take an action, then I take an action, then you take an action. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, he's just going to try to burst us down really fast. So if I can just slam out um, Whispering Woods and blow him up, we win. If he just gets his combo first, he'll just kill us. Abruptement. Pay attention, class. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to learn. Um, yeah, so it's like, I do a thing, you do a thing, I do a thing, you do a thing, I do a thing, you do a thing. It's different from Hearthstone, where Hearthstone it's like, here's my 90 seconds on my turn. Now there's your 90 seconds on your turns, and you do a bunch of things. On my turn, I do a bunch of things. Then on your turn, you do a bunch of things. Very, very, very different. So I'm going to do this, and then I want to do this, this, draw a card, draw a card. But in Artifact, it's like, I'm going to make one choice, but I have like 10, 15 seconds. Then you have one choice, then I have one choice, then you have one choice, then I have one choice, then you have one choice, then I have one choice. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so on and so forth. Um, I think that the choice to give you just like 10, 15, 20 seconds, however long it is, um, we win, right? Because this is going to be 4, 8, 12, 16... 16 and um, 16 and 7 is 22, plus a little bit. Absolutely, yes. So now I can give plus 1, plus 1, and then throw out the Soul of the Forest, and he does not have enough mana to Psychic Scream us, so we just poke him for a little damage this turn, and then next turn we deal plenty, plenty. So even if he heals to full, we can burst him down with this. The only way he could double clear is if he has Thalnos Double Spirit Lash. Okay. Okay. <sighs> 
You can Spirit Lash again, and that's fine. Got him. Thomas wouldn't say it because it dies, right? You're totally right, one classic. You're totally right. Totally right. Oh, this is I would really like to see Mass Dispel you. Oh, that's right. If you did go Mass Dispel Spirit Lash, should have thought of that. Nice. Nice comment. Nice comment. Nice comment. Gosu comment. Very Gosu. Gosu times two. But, um. What was it? We were talking about something previously. We were talking about something. Oh, yeah, Artifact. I think the best design decision in all of Artifact by a wide margin is that 10 to 15, 20 seconds, however long it is, that short period of time where it's your turn and you gotta figure out what's happening. The best decision. I don't know how to describe it, but it feels utterly unlike any game I've ever played. Probably, probably like, um, honestly, an RTS is the one that it feels most similar to. It's like a real-time turn-based game. The field. Super cool. For the wild. There's my comment. There's my comment. Herald of Chaos is in the continuing side of Power Hot. I'm down another 4 pounds to 274. Starting December 301. Doing strength training, so not dropping weight fast, but that's not the objective. Dude, hell yeah, man. Congratulations. That's sick, man. Uh, by the way, I am going to do this right now. Because I don't exactly have an effective tool to deal with this. And this kind of forces him to begin blowing through a lot of his burning stuff. Oh, is that really the most threatening decision? that could be made at that point. All right, that is fantastissimo. All right, let's get some stickiness here. I think we obviously have to kill this. Uh, this guy, I think I want gone as well. And we might just win next turn, because we have double Savage War. Entropy says some turn-based games are real-time if your turn is short enough. The original Diablo was made real-time by doing that. Yeah. What is this deck, baby? Now, what the fuck is this man doing? Now? All right, so if I go Savage Roar, Savage Roar, what happens, huh? What happens? Savage Roar, Savage Roar yields. Uh, 5, 10, 15, like not even remotely close to enough. So, what we're going to do is we are going to very much so, we're going to eventually pop this. There's no way to reduce my numbers very much, but that's okay. So I'm just going to do this. Play both of these little sticky friends. Pop like this. Remove the number of possible targets that he has for attacking to two. And now, he, I mean, he can he can theoretically Volcano, but I think I'm okay because I have a Malfurion and a Branching Paths and still double Savage Roar. We would, we would anticipate uh, to be... We don't anticipate this to be a good decision. Alright, so now he dies. Thank you. Yeah. So Savage Roar, Savage Roar, kill that, kill that, kill his face. Yes. Savage Roar, Savage Roar. I use my face to hit here. I use this 5-1 to hit here, and then I just kill him. I don't know what his deck was. It was some weird Kalaset Shaman. Rank 5, what are you gonna do? Double Savage Roar is ridiculously insane. I think the, the, the play that I would learn from in that game was the throwing out of the Whispering Woods early. Being more willing to do that. I believe that there's many circumstances in which Whispering Woods is good to hold for a long time, but I think that this can trick you into thinking always hold Whispering Woods for a long time. And I think that it was... Frankly, I was just trying it to see how it felt, and then the instant he played Keliseth, I was like, oh, wow, in retrospect, maybe that's something that I should look for. You know, what... what I sort of automatically said, this is a Shutterwalk deck, blur. But then he did double mind control tech, and that's... 
arguably a very strong signal that he is doing some sort of more minion based deck instead of a more um, whatever the fuck based deck. Shut up. Walk. Okay, this is going to be a tricky pick, huh? His deck, Underwear Lad's deck, runs Double Psychic Scream, and I'm not going to tell you anything more until I refill on water, because Stay Hydrated Bot is keeping me covered. Oh, hi, Sierra. Napping, sheriff's napping in the sun. All the wild. All done. So does this thing don't mind control and walk is becoming more and more standard? It depends on what type of shutter walk deck. Typically, when I say a shutter walk deck, what I technically should be saying is a shutter walk deck that's really going for some sort of ridiculous OTK. This is a good call to throw out right now because if I can nourish. Wrath, begin building this board. Violet teachers are a good way to bait out a psychic scream and make underwear lad all concerned and flustered. Solomon says 100 bits for the win. <laughs> Thanks, Solomon. Oh, and by the way, the the tutorial that I was referring to about the guy who was just essentially rebuilding Dark Souls, uh, people in chat knew what I was talking about. Yes, it is the sharp accent Dark Souls thing. You know, I think this is actually intelligent to just curl this out. Like, it's not really much of a reason to keep cards with an ultimate infestation in hand. He has lots of defensive small creatures. He's not going to have a big board of things I need to save very much against swipe, so. I don't need both of these. I can do this. Yep, this is actually, I think, very good. I'm ready to learn. Gain six armor. Who's this? Gain six armor. Who's this? Might seem a little bit like overkill, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get him scared of just getting blown up. Like, if I ultimate infestation, reasonable probability he goes, oh my god, six things on the board, psychic scream. Then I can whispering woods, soul the forest, he can psychic scream that. Then I can whispering woods, soul the forest again. And he doesn't have another psychic screen. Shakes91 says, I'm surprised this guy's still going. You don't usually see a game dev tutorial with 98 episodes. That's really good. See? See? Did I not tell you that we use the Violet Teacher to bait these out? I mean, that was the literal perfect moment and opportunity in order to get this out. This is this is great news. Now, if we ever peel a Whispering Woods, we're going to be in good shape. We're going to be in grand old shape. Hey, W. Corwin, I was just talking about you, Corwin, man. I was literally just talking about you. Yeah, I know this deck. I know what he's doing. So, we do have one Violet Teacher in there. I'm just going to go ahead and run this out and begin hitting him in the face. He's over. Summon the Crablars! Summon two, one, five, Scarabs with Taunt. And I think I actually just want to get hitting him in the face. This damage adds up really fast. 60 health. W. Corns, did you get your inventory image looking right? Yeah, what I did is I just set the size of the um, inventory image to be fixed. And then the rest of the UI is generated dynamically relative to that image. Does the mic sound a little different today? Uh, maybe. Let me just check my settings, make sure. 
I, you know, W Corn, I was, I was sort of stating that I think the thing that was most valuable to me, um, and all that stuff that you were saying, oh, God, I found super helpful. Um, well, hold on, let me, let me see if I can kill this man. So if I was Violet Apprentice, if I double Savage Roar right now, Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, which could likely summon one of those. Great. And then I'm gonna play out this. I'm ready to learn. And I'm going to also. Yep, I have enough mana for this. Cool. I'm just gonna start playing a bunch of cards down. Again, this is this is for a man who is fearful of of getting overrun. Like right now, might be tempted to do another psychic screen, which is fantastic. We're just gonna keep whittling him down. Yeah, the most valuable thing I was saying that you were bringing up, W. Corwin, is um, that UIs, you can't make fully dynamic and extensible because at the end of the day, pretty much on any single resolution you're dealing with, you need to specifically hand identify certain values. We have Hello! It's me, Spirit Lash! Ah! He's got the mark. I think I do want to ultimate infestation here. Uh, this is not that important. It's only really important for the... Uh, for the Violet Teacher. But in this matchup, I just need to continue to put the pressure on. In this regard. There's the other Violet Teacher, and I can generate several additional tokens by going like Violet Teacher, Wild Growth, Draw, and then Soul of the Forest, make him freak out, play another set of Whispering Woods. Anyways. Wow, Ebb on Dragonsmith. I don't know they printed a new card in Hearthstone. All right, so here again is is the we're, we're doing the same thesis, which is that if we flood out lots of small things, it's very easy for him to panic and to wish to run out another psychic screen, which is totally okay. He has an Amara. He has an Amara, so he's going to be capable of setting his health back to forty. And if he does that, then we can still blow him up in one turn. Because Savage Roar, Savage Roar, Branching Paths uses all 10 mana. But this would be 7, 14, 21. This would be used to crash into Amara. This would be um, uh, 31. And this would... Oh, wow, no, I wouldn't have lethal. Oh, come on. <laughs> this bastard... All right. We have several options. My thoughts are plagued. You know, I think I like this I line the best. I go. Boop. I boop. Um. Oh, I did that one wrong. Instruction begins. I shall do I did it fine. Death is eternal. My turn is not. But I don't want to branch him paths here. Or not branch him paths, soul the forest. Do not want to do that. Psychic screen baited out. Perfect. So he's now cleared his own board. I 
thing of beauty. All right, Whispering Woods and Soul Forest. Uh, I think it's probably most intelligent for me to just peel another card off the top in this manner. I have 12 cards left in my deck. We're at 31 health, which is good. Uh, as a win condition, we can also just let the Underwear Lad go to Fatigue. How expensive is this deck dust-wise? Not too expensive. It doesn't really have any significant Legendaria. I think this is a game that we're going to be winning in Fatigue. The Psychic Screams have really slowed the game down. Having a large number of Scare Beetles is pretty valuable. Nice play by him. We still have Soul of the Forest Whispering Woods, so with all the Psychic Screams, we have uh, 11 cards in our deck. He has 8, so I think that's probably where we're going to do it. If he, if he Archbishop Bishop benedicts us, that's also pretty sick. That's also pretty sick. Wow, dirty. Oh my god, I love this story. Oh my god, Freefall03 says, Hello, great to be here. Mind if I tell why I'm here? And then, and then Freefall says, I'm a fire medic in Washington, and months ago I had a patient who tried to end their life. Thankfully, I was able to revive them, get them to the ER. I promise there is a point to this. A couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to meet up with the patient, see how they were doing. It was explained to me that they were the victim of bullying in school and thought this was the easy way. The patient's doing much better, and to my surprise, they said it was due to an online community. Oh. Oh my god. I hope this is going where I think it's going. Because if so, I'm going to become a little emotional. I hope it's either the full sincerity that I imagine. Or it's a meme. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually think. See why I wouldn't. Well, I want the spell damage out. Well, free fall if that goes in the direction that I'm thinking. That pleases me. Oh, they had to explain to me the kind of streamer who made them feel like they were part of a community full of positivity. The streamer was you. Oh. Oh, it wasn't a meme, it was just really nice. Oh shit, I'm gonna get choked up. Oh man, oh that's so wonderful. Oh my god, that's so wonderful. Oh, oh god, that makes me so happy. Oh my goodness. Oh, that bastard has a second Shadow Visions. <laughs> Alright, well. Oh. Oh, goodness. Oh, that's that's fantastic. That's, like, really important to me, man. I got beat up when I was in elementary school and high school. Had a brief break from it in middle school. <laughs> but uh, it was actually by a guy that I was really good friends with. Alright, this game just got really hard. I was really good friends with. You moved from somewhere else. Kind of came in the middle of elementary school, so I befriended him, and then he got popular. So he used to wait for me after school and beat me up. No fun. No fun at all. That kind of bullying really has an effect on a kid. Like, I mean, that was... I mean, that's like... Shit, like two decades ago, and I say I still have it. Still has, you know, like pain thinking about that. Remembering how that felt. And I, I just never, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of that sort of 
exclusivist, like, you know, you're not allowed to... No, you're not one of the cool kids, you're doing it wrong, flirting bear, all that sort of stuff. Oh, I'm just not a fan of that. I think I do have to draw here. I'm of the, of the opinion that pretty much most people are pretty freaking fantastic if you just hang out with them for any amount of time. You gotta get past that little barrier of awkwardness or barrier of uh, whatever, whatever it is that people put up where it's like, yes, here's the autopilot that I run through for the first 15 minutes of meeting every single human. Get past that and people are like, interesting and kind and smart. I have all sorts of cool things to say, so... I don't know, ever since I was a little kid, I really like that. Focus on... I almost want to call it being, like, quietly inclusive. Also, I'm dead. I can't win this game. Masterful. You win. You know, the sort of, you like, hey, if you say hey to me, how can I just start talking to you? Not that, like, 15-minute show. I can start talking to you. Trying to connect. Being as non-judgmental as humanly possible, so. Means a great deal to me to share that story for you, Paul. I'm gonna get choked up again. Whew! Malfurion versus Gul'dan! Oh, goodness. Your soul shall be mine! I must protect the wild. Wow. What are we even up against? We're up against a warlock. Do I keep this whole thing? Because I can do this turn two, this turn three, and then other defensive things following. It seems acceptable. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Well, that was nice. Oh my god, it's a Q block. All right, the meta has changed in the last week. <laughs> Because the priest and the Q block matchups are the rough ones. Well, if anyone out there is ever having a struggle, or who's feeling excluded, or if you're just having a rough day, or if you're having on and off depression, I really hope that you can come here and just feel like it's a comfy, pleasant place. That is like a very deliberate goal of mine, is to just be as devotedly pleasant, or devoted to pleasantness, as humanly possible. Put it like this, yeah. You know, I mean... In, in the in the obvious uh, regard, you know, if you have, there's all sorts of things going on on the political front. As I've said before, absolutely deserve their opportunity to be discussed and talked about and all that. All sorts of events going on in the world, various concerns that people have and so on and so forth. And I think those completely deserve time and opportunities for discussion and focus. Unleash me. And I want to try to have this be an environment where you can come to know that you can step away from that a little Instruction bit. Begins. Not as in permanently step away, but as in a... I want to shoot this guy. As an opportunity to sort of... Excuse me. Just a, a place that you know you can have a good play. I think breaks from stressful things and from focus is really important. You know, I want to have a little a little oasis without worry here. Because I think that there's this there's this problem that exists in the modern day and age that just did not exist, which is that you have the ability to access all kinds of shit more information. I still think getting the ultimate infestation is better, maybe? if I do this, then I go to nine, and then if I branching paths to double armor, that seems good, right? Gain two mana crystals. I'm ready to learn. 
Gain six armor. Gain six armor. Instruction it, like, you can literally sit down on your phone and start reading about shit and get yourself totally strung out. Because you just have access to too much information. You can get off work at 5 and your phone just starts buzzing at 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. at night. Work emails, work emails, work emails. Pay attention to this, pay attention to this, right? There's too much access to your work. Or even, you know, texting among friends. Like, texting your friends is awesome, right? Having conversations and being able to talk to all your buddies that easily. It is awesome. Make no mistake about it. Did I draw Jasper Spellstone? No. But sometimes you need some alone time, man. Sometimes you just want to put that phone away and not feel like you're hurting your friends or any of that stuff, so... I spent a lot of my life just developing pretty sharp compartmentalization among stuff. Like, if I'm here doing this show, I am not worried at all about whatever the heck is going on in my email. We win. I'm done with my show and I want to just like hang out elsewhere. I just turn off all the internet, turn off all that messaging, all that stuff. It feels, it feels really important to me. You know, a lot of times I go on walks and I don't bring my phone. I bring just my keys so I can get back into my house. And I'll just walk. And you know what happens sometimes? I'm on that walk and I get fucking bored. <laughs> I get real bored. And I know that that's that moment where I feel my hand wanting to just automatically reach out and just be like, you know, you might, a phone is like a modern day teddy bear for adults, right? You know, when a kid just feels, you know, oh, I'm scared, just clutches the teddy bear. Oh, I have any emotion at all. And pull my phone out. You know, I try to just work against that by having little breaks and times where I actually can focus on whatever it is I'm focusing on. So it's really important to me that, you know, Day Night TV is that little oasis away from stress and obligation. A place you can go and feel comfortable, like you can be relaxed and kind of know that, generally speaking, everyone's going to be real pleasant, cheerful. And that sort of thing. In Japan, of Fortuitous is where everyone knows your name. Yeah, it's 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 amazing how frequently I recognize pretty much at least, at least like 80, 90% of the names that are typing in chat. Unless they're, you know, new subs. Build the board! Patrick <laughs> Jarvis is the same. I recognize you 80 to 90% of the time, too. <laughs> oh, shit. A nourish would be the nut draw here for me. Like, nourish, drop two arcanes. Oh, <laughs> All right. Do I want to do this now? Yep, I want to do this now. Oh, the wild. Free falls. Hope you have a great day. Keep doing what you do. You're helping more people than you know. That is, that is, you've really made my day. Hell, my, hell, my year. That's, <laughs> that's just, that's just very moving and wonderful and very positive news. Wade. Oof. Nourish one time. God, how does he do it? This could 
could be a ramp druid. Could also be a taunt druid. It's a tanto pronto druid, then uh, he's running Hadronox and no spreading Plegu. Plegu! Nice. Ambrosia. Looks like it's a Tonto Pronto Druid, which is very good news for us because if he's a Taunt Druid, he's extraordinarily unlikely running a Spreading Plague because then his Hadronox would summon a bunch of 1-5s instead of 4-8s and 4-12s. Dragon Hatcher. Oh, yeah, Tail Potato. Oh, this is a 4x? Yes. So what we can do now is we can summon this Whispering Woods. And we can summon this Soul of the Forest. This needs three more armor to gain the upgrade. For the wild. Doesn't work really here. <laughs> Justin Saints says, Sean, boy, I haven't watched for like one and a half years, so would you look fine, mate? You've been working out? No homo? Well, yeah, I have been. And I got a haircut, and I got a V-neck shirt. Woo. And I use a French took. Because I listen to Tan on Queer Eye. Alright, well, what is he then? Is he just a taunt druid that's made a considerable error? Druid. You said I apologize. No, it feels good. It feels good. And it's, yeah. Day nine. Oh my god. Are you mm. working out? Yeah, you know, I've been lifting. Yeah. yeah. It's me. I'm day nine. My gameplay is boring. I feel stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six times four is twenty-four. I won, I won, I won, I won. I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. Actually, we super duper won this game. I can see. Just insane, don't worry about it. I know where you're coming from. Ugh. I get what you were trying to do. I get what you're trying to go for. for doom. Now there's this Sean sitting who's playing MTG next. Friday, Friday, drafting 19 on Friday. <laughs> Everybody's looking forward to. Friday. I don't remember how the rest of the song goes, but. Job done. Alright, so it's not an even shaman. The meta has changed since a week ago when I was last playing more. <laughs> if you're not 17, because I watched your MPG videos last night, couldn't help but just grin while you're stomping. <gasps> Dinosaurs! What's M19? M19 is the newest batch of cards for Magic the Gathering. I'm going to shoot him.
hope they stopped doing corsets. They did. They're bringing them back. Hey. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot both of them. I mean, it's a completely acceptable play. Instruction this really puts the pressure on him to start clearing. And then I'll Malfurion the Pestilent, and then the following turn, I will Innervate Ultimate Infestation. The Innervate is oh, so you're playing a specific draft mode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have like 31,000 gems, some huge number of gems. 1-1! One, one. Mental Dislocator! Mental Dislocator. Mental Dislocator. It's not extraordinarily important that I try to clear the board very frequently. Oh, what's this? I should See if I just the pop this guy out. Life is over. I might clear one of these. But like, I don't need to clear this one. It's generally more important that I'm dealing face damage if this has the look of a shutterwalk shaman that's trying to get to the Shutterwalk quickly. Like the far sight's strongly indicative of someone who's trying to go deep in the deck and get some higher value cards, combo cards, clears, things like this. 31k to fuck? Yeah, I have a lot of them. I have a lot of dudes, man. So I can clear and go in. If I threw an arcane tyrant, that would have been pretty, pretty violent, pretty violent blowout. See, like right now, uh, his good clears are volcano and lightning storm. This is out of lightning storm range. By not attacking Grumble, his volcano's weaker. So, <laughs> Sean, how does the TMNT theme song addle the brain today? I could not fucking sleep. I was just falling asleep. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles opening theme song just kept filling my entire brain. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team. Ninja Turtles. This guy has a title search. What the fuck does he think he is? Volcanoing would be an acceptable and expected result here. I just couldn't. couldn't. One one. Didn't feel as good about that one. I am ready to learn. Truth is found in death. This is an interesting little deck. So I can set this. I shall do as you shall do as you say. I shall do as you say. This is a very interesting little deck. Is that bot subscribe? Yes, stay hydrated, bot. Yeah, cheers. Wilson, wow. So, if I just drew, I think drawing is actually good here. Uh, draw one, but I can't play that at the end. Drawing is good. Yeah, there we go.
Get on through. This is a really interesting style of shutter walk. I think we win because we're digging deeper faster. And he appears to have more creatures than we. Um, and so if he's gonna like full board up with this stuff. Good, hit that. Seems like a good as bo a board as any to hit him with the dat. Alright, so we go mmm bop. This. It's fine to do the right now. Savage of War. So somewhere in my deck, I have Soul of the Forest. Somewhere, some way, somehow. I don't really feel under enormous threat. I guess he does get two of those. My jaws that bite, my claws that catch. There is little time. That's really interesting. The elements will destroy you. Did we lose? Is that it? I think we might be dead. We were one turn off from a, from a killer victory. I think I gotta just throw out this. Throw out this. Might throw up in my mouth a little bit. I think we did. Rather, more than likely dead. Hey, he does have another shutter walk, right? I believe, I believe that he doth. Dead, we may as well just like dead with style, you know. I'm out of cards. Let's see, huh? I think I was like one turn late on nabbing a soul of forest, or I was a few turns early. Or I, I I didn't get the soul of forest in time to do what I would have normally wanted to do, but I think maybe against that type of deck, I need to just be ultra aggressive about building up the board, uh, because. He appears to be a much slower drawer than the other Shutterwalk kind of deck that I'm used to. Now what keyboard do I have? I have MX Browns. MX Browns. I will fight Getting to this thing to swap out a mind control for a mind control fight. tech. I'm not entirely sure what you were referring to. I'm going to keep both spreading plugs and just own this guy. It's Paladins. Guys, it's, it's a matchup that we have an advantage in. Yeah. We have turned our curse into our Oh, strength. yeah. Oh, all right. Summon the army of one ones. Ultra, ultra attack. Ultra attack. 
Boop. Mind if I roll need? I've not seen an even paladin in many moons. Huh. I mean, it seems like I'm just going to coin Spreading Plague next turn. So even Paladins typically are very grindy in nature. Very mid rangey in nature. And this seems obviously correct to do. Spreading plague to refill against. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. <laughs> it's time for a little this blood. This all seems fine. Reporting for duty. Kill any of them. I obviously power those things up, but. Oh, Steam self updater. Restart Steam. Go. Oh, interesting. Cool little deck he has. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Hmm. And my Steam is taking a long ass time to update. So probably not this. Don't want to do anything particularly good. We can definitely pop to hit that. We can also like trade away and reflood. Do a coin out power of the wild. That seems that seems weak. So the force just does not really get me going that hard. I think this is the thing that I'm going to do. Time waits for no one. This feels like the best play to do this and to hit here. And then to perhaps. Well, yeah, this is probably the best play to clear like this. I think that was the best play that I could have done. Oh my god. Steam has updated their chat program. Holy cow. I think this is okay to do right now. Pay attention, class. I'm gonna have to do these two things next. Svergurus's fact Black Knight is seeing a play again makes me happy. Yeah, isn't it just a cool card? Summons. I want up to four little dudes. Ow. Wow. Wow, what a cool deck, right? I mean, let me peel an ultimate infestation and just shit upon his dreams. Alright, that's... that'll do. That'll do. Circle of life. 
is over. You know, I think it was incorrect to actually keep two spreading plays. I think that was the, the big error that's making this feel so difficult. What a cool little deck he's running. It's like bells and buffs. You basically just play some sticky and some tech creatures. You're always going to have targets for the buffs because you're a one Xer. Mm. And then there's, there's actually quite a lot of strong... God, that is cool. Maybe we'll do that at the end of today's show. I kind of want to just do a strong meta deck. It's okay. That's totally okay. Reporting for duty. Yeah, because this this actually has the power to punch through a lot, because you just get Blessing of Kings down, you get a couple of strong dudes, and then you clear with qualities, consecrates, and so on. Well, I, uh, whenever the Boomsday set drops, I'm going to devote the entire week to playing through that. So if I went hit, 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 thing hit, nah, still can't break through. I think I just do need to pop the big boy. I think this actually might be better. Will we get Hearthstone? Yeah, man. What's the exact release date of Boomsday? If I remember it correctly. Seventh of August, I think, is the what I read in the IGNs. All right, cool. It is August seventh. Yeah, I'm doing seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Hearthstone. This is this deck has been challenging to play against. I'd really go into the tank, man. Except I need the Boomsday reveals so far. Eh. The thing that I actually find rather interesting about Hearthstone is that... Ping, 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 boom. Yeah. Ping, ping. Wait, I can go 890. Dokily. Bum 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 ba da da da. Class. 
I'm ready to learn. Plenty of card draw on my deck. I'm ready to learn. The deck is all going to be able to attack this next turn, so I just blow them out. Everybody's playing the even paladin deck right now? Okay, here we go. Twist us, TV slash BM Kibler. Let's look at this list, man. The victory is yours. 